Hey everyone, and welcome to CounterBuzz. I'm Greg Rosink, and today I'm here with Dave Schaup, Product Manager for Controllers here at Hunter Industries. Dave, will you tell us a little bit more about what you do here? Well, I'm the Senior Product Manager for Controllers and Sensors, electronics basically. Um, a lot of background myself in commercial controllers, software and communications, and my favorite two wire decoder systems. Okay. And how long have you been with Hunter Industries? Been with Hunter for 20 years now, um, in the irrigation industry for about 25. And have you been in product management the entire time? Pretty much. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, today we're here to talk about the new product, the Easy DS or Easy Decoder System. And this is, well, you know what, why don't you tell us a little bit more about this product and what, what it has in store for customers? Well, this is a two-wire decoder system that changes everything you think you know about two-wire decoders. Uh, it was really the brainchild of our director of electrical engineering. Uh, kind of came out of left field as far as we were concerned because we focused on the traditional premium type of decoder systems. This is a radical concept, and uh, I certainly saw the potential in it, but I didn't expect it to catch on as quickly as it did. So it's a cost-effective, simple two-wire decoder system that really changes the rules. Awesome. And, and for our customers that might not know what a decoder system is, can you explain a little bit in detail about what a decoder system does? Sure. So in a traditional, conventionally wired system, you have many valves out in the landscape. You have a wire running to every single valve solenoid and then common wires to bring them back and close the circuit. So that's basically a lot of wire, one wire per zone of irrigation. A two-wire system changes that. The two-wire system, you run a single pair of wires throughout the entire landscape, and in cases it can be more than a single pair, but you run the pair of wires throughout the landscape and wherever you need valve control, you just cut the wire and splice in a little waterproof gadget called the decoder. And they can live underground and underwater. Um, but the advantage right up front is the savings in copper wire alone because you don't need a wire for every valve. You just need that pair going through the property. The other big advantage, which you sometimes don't find out until later, is the flexibility after the initial installation because you already have it backfilled, overplanted, everything's working, and then someone changes their mind. They want a flower bed where hardscape was going to be, whatever the change is. With two wire, you don't have to trench back to the controller. You didn't need to run a big bundle of spares. All you have to do is get to the nearest part of the two wire path, cut it, and splice in another decoder. And now you have more valve control. So that's kind of a double whammy, low cost up front, uh, simplicity also as far as troubleshooting field mm -hmm. wiring and flexibility after the initial installation. Okay, so this would be a great product for customers that are installing maybe a, a, an apartment complex where they're going to do one phase, one building, and then they're going to expand off of that. You can just continue to expand off of that same two wire Absolutely. path. Absolutely, and don't purchase anything you don't need until that next phase comes up. Okay, and then specifiers would really uh, benefit from using this type of technology on their plans because they can actually do that same thing. If they're building out a phased project or they're designing a phased out project, they can actually specify this on the plans for that same reason that we just talked about. Correct. Cool. Uh, so what, what makes the Easy DS or Easy Decoder system different than other decoder systems? Ah, great question. Traditionally, the, the premium decoder systems, and we have them too, but not just ours, play a pretty major game with electrical energy. One kind of energy that's unusual going down the two-wire path, it's direct burial, low voltage, safe, but it's a different kind of energy than we normally send to a solenoid. And then, when it gets to the decoder and we activate the decoder, <clears throat> it flips that energy around into something that makes a solenoid activate. So it is somewhat magical. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they require nearly perfect installations. Special wire, special waterproof connectors, no shorts to earth ground. The easy decoder system changes all of that because it works on standard 24 volts at 50 or 60 hertz. And for that reason, because we're not massively transforming electrical energy, 
pretty much any wiring technique will work. Uh, it's as simple as connecting valve solenoids in a way. Uh, we don't need special wire. In fact, given distance um, requirements, we can use almost any wire you've got. We don't need special connectors. Use the same connectors you use to connect your landscape solenoids. Uh, we don't need special earth grounding in the two-wire path. You just wire it up and it starts working. Okay, so you mentioned a couple of things there. Typically in our two-wire systems from Hunter Industries, we offer waterproof wire connectors, the DBRY-6 in the box. This does not have that connector in the box. That's right, and uh, it doesn't need it because whatever you're normally using to connect your regular landscape solenoids, reach in the same bag and connect these because they're very, very tolerant. And a little bit of short to earth, or we don't want to see that, but pretty much any solid professional grade landscape connection will do the trick. And uh, you know, our customers that have actually installed a two-wire system before, are, their heads are spinning right now. They're like, wait, he just said no grounding? Why would we not have grounding? And why are we not requiring grounding in the system? We do want earth grounding connected to the controller. So this works with two different controllers, and they both have an earth ground lug inside the chassis. Please ground the controller. <laughs> but we don't need additional surge protection in the two-wire path. And that's one of the hallmarks of the traditional premium decoder systems is every so many feet or decoders or meters you have to attach earth ground and connect it off the two wire path. With this we're saying just ground the controller, wire out the decoders till you get to the last valve and stop, you're finished. No extra earth ground. Okay, perfect. Now I'm sure our customers are dying to know what does this great product work with? What controllers is it compatible with? Right, so this is the output module that actually enables the Easy Decoder system and if it looks familiar to you a little bit it's because it's very similar to our ICM 800 expansion modules and that means, the answer to your question finally, it works <laughs> with either the ICC2 or the HCC HydroWise controllers and only those two controllers right now ICC2 and HCC share the same back box and the same output modules. So this has a regular locking lever. Tip it into one of the module slots, lock her down, and you've just turned it into a 54 station two wire decoder system. Wow, perfect. Now, you kind of went over this, so you kind of briefly mentioned it. You don't need any special wiring. What is the wiring requirement for this and how far can we go with the wiring? Right, so we have a wiring chart, and uh, part of that answer depends on the number of active solenoids on a two-wire path. But in a basic, uh, to start out simple, for a single solenoid, with 14-gauge wire, which is pretty standard in the U.S. for decoder systems, you can go about 2,292 feet, conservatively estimated. Uh, that would be the same as basically 2 millimeter squared wired in an international configuration and you're pushing 800 meters per two-wire path. And we offer two two-wire paths from the module. So we could go 2,200 feet or 800 meters this way, and another path could go 2,200 feet or 800 meters that way. With two solenoids active at the same time on the path, this is, just forget the decoders are there, right? It's the same as sizing wire for standard 24 volt solenoids. With two active solenoids, the wiring distance is cut in half. So if you need to run two at once, then instead of 2,200 feet, it would be 1,100 feet. But the good news on this keeps going because we don't, re we don't require 14 gauge or two millimeter squared wire. You can go, up to, well, you can actually go over 900 feet on 18 gauge wire, which is about 0.8 millimeters squared. Um, and on a 54 station controller, on two two wire paths, 900 feet in each direction, still pretty darn far. Yeah. So, pretty good performance. I think you can get a, you can get a big property done with, with that. But it's just important to, to keep that rule in mind for wire sizing purposes, forget the decoders there, we have a chart we can link to uh, that'll show you all the different distances and different gauges. Two active solenoids on a wire path, cut it in half. Three active, four active, we keep cutting it just like we would for standard solenoids. Okay, wow. And you mentioned during uh, that 
explanation that if you're running two solenoids at the same time, can we run two solenoids on both the HCC and the ICC2, or is it limited? Well, technically, you can run more than that. So oh. <clears throat> the decoder itself has enough energy to put out, uh, enough energy to activate two 24-volt solenoids simultaneously. But the controllers, the ICC2, to start with, can operate two programs at once. We have four programs, any two can run at once. So that's two different stations coming on, and each of those could activate two solenoids at once. Not a preferred system design, but hey, we know it happens. The HCC, Hydrowise controller, doesn't use traditional programs, but it also is capable of activating two stations at once, and of course, each of those could have two solenoids. Okay, perfect. Now, one of the questions our customers might have is, hey, if I've already got an existing controller with conventional wiring, can I use the two wire and the conventional on the same controller? That's one of the cool things about this system. Because it's 24 volts, 60 hertz, or 50 hertz international, doesn't matter, uh, it's not fussy about the wire. If you, can, if you have an existing conventional bundle in the ground mm -hmm. and you want to convert to two wire, if you can find two wires that work, that still have integrity all the way to the end of the path, you can take those two wires and turn them into a two wire path for easy decoders. Okay. We're not going to be sharing commons or anything with conventional wiring. We're going to abandon conventional wiring and turn that bundle in to a two-wire path. This is really handy when you get into older systems that have been in ground a long time. You've got tree root damage, maybe rodents, things been a mess for years. As long as you can get two wires all the way out to the end or even from valve box to valve box, now it becomes two-wire. And is the EZ1 backward compatible with our ICD Decoders no. as well? No? No. No backwards compatibility. Easy decoder and the Easy DM output module always work together and only work together. It's not compatible with ICD, Dual, Pilot, any other Hunter product or any other manufacturer's product. This only goes in the HCC or ICC2. The Easy One decoder only works with this module. Okay, I think that answered a lot of questions in this video. Also, one of the cool features in the EZ-1 decoder is a diagnostic light. Can you tell us what that light does? Yeah, this is great. Uh, most decoders, even fancy ones, if you're out in the field and you're wondering why a valve's not coming on, it's just a lump in a valve box. He doesn't tell you very much. It's hard to know what's happening. So the EZ-1 decoder actually comes with an LED, a diagnostic LED. When you first program the address into the decoder, that lights up to show you the address has been accepted. After that, you wire it in line in the two-wire path in a valve box. Whenever this station is active, that light flashes once per second. And if it's not active, the light is off. So if the valve isn't coming on, and you don't know exactly where the problem might be, run the station at the controller and see if this little light's flashing. If it is, the decoder's running, and either the solenoid's bad, the valve has a problem, or maybe the connection between the two is bad. But if you run the, thing, uh, run the station at the controller and the light's not flashing, then we either have a bad decoder or its connection to the two-wire path is severed. Okay, so, so you immediately, it, de it demystifies the whole decoding process because <laughs> yeah. you can see what it's doing. So it's giving you feedback on your programming, on if your stations are on or off. So it's a great troubleshooting feature as well. Right. So to sum this product line up a little bit, it's simple, doesn't really care what type of wire you're using. The connectors don't have to be DBRY-6 super connectors, although you're welcome to use them. Absolutely. They don't necessarily need to be that rugged. That's right. And in fact, even the wire polarity doesn't matter. So traditionally, most decoder systems have two different colored wires, and you have to keep them straight all the way down the two-wire path. We use red and blue just to show that these wires go to the two-wire path, and the black wires go to the solenoids you want to activate. But frankly, red and blue don't matter in this system. It's 24 volts AC. If you mix up red and blue and then switch blue and red as you go box to box down the line, makes no difference. It'll work perfectly well.
Oh, that's huge. That's a big, that's a big aspect right there. So anything else you want to add to this before we wrap up? Oh, well, I could go on all day. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, a question we do get a lot is, will these programmable decoders work with our ICDHP handheld programming device, which is like a magic wand for the ICD decoders? And uh, unfortunately, that answer is no. Uh, the chip technology in here is different. It will not interact with ICDHP. However, it does have a similar communication technology built in here for future development. And I think that's all I'll say about that for now. <laughs> but, perfect, uh, perfect. We like that technology and we'll be seeing more of it. Okay, cool. And this product was huge out of the gates on launch. We had some back orders, but we've we fixed that issue now, right? We we're, are fixing that issue. <laughs> we're caught up on order inventory. Perfect. Well, Dave, thank you for stopping by. Oh, and, my pleasure. And meeting with us. And for all of you, thank you for stopping by. We'll see you here on the next episode of CounterBuzz.